hey, it's fall and winter is just around the corner. The vast majority of anglers are taking their topwater rods off the deck right now and putting them into storage for the year. But if you do that, you're probably going to miss out on your best opportunity at big topwater fish for the year. You're watching Bass Quest, the one and the only Puerto Rican redneck. In this video, we're going to break down some of the following keys to late season topwater success. Number one is how cold is too cold? When do those fish shut down and when will they no longer commit to a topwater bait? Also, what locations should I key in on in order to have my best chance of success with topwater in the fall? And third, what are the key baits that I need to focus on? Because not all topwaters are going to work during this period. It gets really specific as we get later in the year. If you stay to the end, I'm also going to include a bonus tip that will help you catch topwater fish longer than anyone else, especially here in the southeast. Alright, so the first point we have to be thinking about is how cold is too cold? What does too cold even mean? In the fall, as we transition into the winter, it's similar to the spring in that the weather patterns can be very volatile. You can have a day like today when I'm out here in a t-shirt, it's probably 60 degrees outside, we've got a light rain outside. Well, in two days, it's going to be about 30 degrees out here at the same time, and then it's going to jump back up again. You have all kinds of inconsistencies in the weather, but that gets those fish feeding because they have a sense of urgency that it's going to be winter time soon. Now we know as anglers during this transitional period that our water temps are going to be gradually dropping as we move into the winter. So as anglers out on the water, what we're going to see is a lot of volatile changing in temperature, but the fish are going to feel something very different in their environment. And that's because water temps rise and fall much slower than air temperature. What ends up happening is you could have a really, really cold night. It might, you know, bump down the surface temperature for the first part of the morning, but that water, you know, the main temperature of that water is still in the 60s or it's still in the upper 50s. It's going to take a while for that to gradually decline. So you can't go based off of what you feel. You have to go based off of what the fish feel. But there's two more factors you need to understand in order to be successful. The second thing that we need to talk about is where. Where can we throw these top waters? What am I looking for in order to be successful? So I live here in Tennessee, sort of the middle part of the country. We have highland reservoirs, we have lowland reservoirs, but one of the most successful patterns for really late top water fishing is going to be grass. Now we have eelgrass, we have hydrilla, we even have um, some pads in some of these lakes. You name it, get around vegetation because one thing that it does is that it holds heat. It also holds nutrients and pushes out oxygen, especially when it's still alive. So you're still going to be looking for the stuff that is healthy, something that you can still rip a chatterbait through, something that comes back on your hook as green, and that's going to tell you where to key in to catch big fish really really late they're gonna be really shallow they're gonna stick with that grass even as we have wintertime drawdowns on a lot of these lakes now these drawdowns in many cases are actually what makes this pattern so successful what happens is we have these vast grass mats that we get throughout the, the late part of the summer and into the beginning of the fall and there's a lot of places that you just can't get your boat to present a lure as far back as these fish will get in this grass. As you have a drawdown, grass starts to die out. There's big sections of grass that get blown out by all the wind and the fronts that are coming in. So you start to have isolated patches and the fish are getting pulled out so they have a limited area and they're on the move. So they're in a place that they're not used to being. A lot of times when a fish is in a new location, that can be some of your best opportunity to catch that fish. They're not set up on a piece of cover or structure that they've been seeing the same baits presented over and over. They're in a new area, your bait comes in, you're the first one there, you have a good opportunity to catch a trophy sized fish that way. Now the second place I really want to mention that's been really successful for me is 45 degree banks like chunk rock banks or bluff wall transitions. And they're effective because these fish are migrating. It's just like the spring. They're transitioning out of a creek. They're transitioning into a creek. Whatever it is, as you get later in the year, they're probably going to be transitioning more out in order to get to their wintertime haunts out there. So those areas can be great to target because, again, rock holds heat. And a lot of times when you've got a rock bank or a steeper bank, 
that steepness oh, continues God. on. You know, in a highland reservoir or even a lowland reservoir, you have kind of a, a ridge right there or you have a deflection of wind so it can protect that area. If you've got one that's going to get a lot of sun, especially in the afternoon, that can be an awesome area where bait fish and bass will congregate as they're moving on their way out. And the last place we need to talk about is what I call the mud. You know, when we talk about fishing the mud on the TVA over here, it's when you have to get so far back. I mean, like, put your boat, beat your boat, and then cast shallower. There's a lot of fish that will continue to push shad during this drawdown, even if there's not grass around, just on these little mud flats, in the backs of main lake pockets, in the backs of some creeks, especially smaller creeks, you'll see this, where these fish will just be congregated back there. The only thing that's really holding them is the mud, the amount of bait that's there. Sometimes you, you get some added cover in that mix as well, maybe some stumps, uh, maybe some laydowns or something like that. But that can be an awesome area to target those fish because even if it's cold, they're feeding ultra, ultra shallow. So if a fish is in eight to 12 inches of water, it's nothing for them to eat something on top. They're gonna to continue to eat surface baits because that's how they're feeding. Now for the million dollar question, what baits do you need? What is absolutely essential for me to have in order to target these fish? And so we're gonna break it down based off of the areas that we just talked about. Number one, if you're fishing grass, such as hydrilla, milfoil, or eelgrass, there's a lot of options out there that are very successful on top water. The most popular being a hollow body frog. Another really popular option for these isolated mats and sparse grass is a buzz frog. Specifically, probably my favorite and what's gotten really popular over here the last few years has been the top toad. Um, it, it stays floating, you can stop it and then you can retrieve it. It's got a good plopping sound as it goes through the water. That can be a deadly, deadly lure to throw. Another option in that same buzzing topwater category or moving topwater category is the Big Easy. It's something that you see guys throw a lot in Florida, but it's gained a lot of popularity here in the southeast, and you can be very successful throwing a swim bait and buzzing that through there. It just has a different sound that the fish are not used to. And I'll give you two more here. One is a fluke because a lot of times these fish are very finicky. They've been seeing frogs for the past three months because guys start on this a little bit earlier than they should. And so sometimes you can follow up a fish that missed or just fish on top of some of this stuff that can get you a bite that you wouldn't have gotten before. All right, and then last but not least, probably my favorite thing to throw on sparse grass and isolated mats this time of year. It's actually what I caught my biggest topwater fish on ever last year about this exact same time, and that is a buzz bait. But it's real specific what kind of buzz bait we're throwing. So let's jump into the next category first and then we'll talk about that a little bit. So remember the second location that we were really keyed in on is gonna be transitional banks, 45 degree banks or bluff wall transitions. That is another great place to throw this buzz bait as well as our third option, which we said was the mud or ultra shallow fish that are not related to vegetation and maybe wood cover in the backs of pockets or creeks. A buzz bait is a great option for that as well. So to me, it is the most versatile and probably one of the longest lasting topwater bites that you can throw on a lot of different lakes in a lot of different conditions and catch big fish doing it. Now along with that buzz bait on these transition baits or this really shallow stuff, another bait that I like to throw into the mix is a wake bait. I've got a few that I throw, one from Jackal that I really like. I also throw a slammer, um, especially a big one like an eight inch slammer up shallow. This is a bulky presentation that you can work really slow and call these fish up to eat it. Some guys do the same thing with a whopper plopper, but I feel like that weight bait gets more attention as you get later and later into the year and colder and colder water temps as well as air temperatures. And I'll give you two more for these same conditions. One is going to be a spook, but it's not going to be your average, you know, standard size spook. This is the time of year that I go really big a big pencil popper, like a 130 size, or a mega sexy dog. You know, an eight inch plus topwater walking bait is a dynamite imitation. It can be really good on highland reservoirs that have big blue back herring. It can be really good on lowland reservoirs where there's big gizzard shad. Sometimes those fish just want that big presentation and it can be absolutely deadly. 
And then lastly, to contrast that completely, I really like to throw small popper. Now that popper is great because if you get the right kind of popper, you can walk that thing back and forth just like a spook. But it's absolutely deadly because you get that, you still have that plopping sound. It throws a little bit of commotion up there, but it's very subtle. Now colors for the weight bait, for the poppers, for the big spook, for the buzz bait, I'm going to go simple and I'm going to go bold. I'm going to go bone, I'm going to go white, I'm going to go black. You really don't need much more than that. Now jumping back to that buzz bait, what I think really matters with that buzz bait, and I'm different than a lot of guys. I see a lot of guys talking about late season buzz bait fishing. Uh, Randy Block at Intuitive Angling did a great video on late season buzz bait fishing the other day. Johnny Schultz has done some great videos on late um, buzz bait fishing and a lot of guys I know they do the same thing that these guys are talking about and have great success but for me it's always been different. Most guys they go to a little bit heavier buzz bait, a bigger presentation and especially a big loud blade whether it's clacking or just that they've got it you know they've, they've scuffed up the ribbon on there to where it's squeaking and stuff and just making a lot of racket and I have just not had the same level of success as those guys and it might just be um, a pressure standpoint I fish really pressured bodies of water and maybe they just see that stuff too much but for me I've gone the opposite direction and had tremendous success in the last five years or so doing that and what I'm talking about is I have a local company over here Saudi Custom Tackle they make me a full-size buzz bait and I'll go light quarter ounce is the heaviest I'm gonna go eighth ounce is what I really like it's a full-size buzz bait it's got a full-size hook on it the right you know the the heavier gauge wire so I can throw it on straight braid 40 pound braid even 50 pound braid if I want to and then I have a small pug style swim bait as you can see that I stick on there I prefer that over the frog trailer it just seems like the the frog a lot of times overpowers a smaller blade like that and that does something very unique in combination with this little swim bait what it does is it keels out this bait and it allows it to come over the top of grass mats and that's extremely powerful you can throw this in the same grass mats that you're going to be throwing your frog in and you can get that buzz bait to actually function and go across that and it's amazing some of the bites that you'll get with just that speed the speed and cadence that you have to have with the buzz bait will get you bites that you wouldn't normally have gotten out of certain mats another powerful thing with it is that fat little swim bait right there it actually lifts that bait a lot so even though I have a small blade on there it's not like most small bladed buzz baits you don't have to work it really fast like you would have to work them you can work it as slow as you would some of these bulkier buzz baits with a bigger blade and that's extremely powerful late in the season and finally what I think makes this most deadly is that it's subtle it sounds different than any other buzz bait that those fish are hearing out there. All right, so for the bonus tip, I can't believe I'm giving this one away because it's something that's it's been a staple in my fishing and it's what's enabled me to catch um, fish on top water in February, in December, just, just times when no one else is even thinking about tying on a top water anymore. And that is wet weather springs. When you have a wet weather spring, it's similar to the main river channel. Water is being pumped out from deep, deep underground. So it's geothermally heated. It's just like being in your basement in the middle of winter time. It's always 65 degrees down there, right? Well, that water pumping out of that wet weather spring is always going to be 60, 63 degrees. So this is something that you have to do homework with, but it can be absolutely deadly because regardless of air temperatures, regardless of water temperatures in the area, it gives you a stable ecosystem where crawfish, bait, bluegill, everything's gonna be around there, and it's a feeding frenzy all winter long, even in the most brutal conditions. And that's usually where I catch my first topwater fish of the year, and where I catch my last one of the year is gonna be around some kind of spring. Topwater is one of the most fun ways that you can catch a big fish any time of the year but it's only a small piece of the puzzle when it comes to targeting trophy sized fish during the fall to winter transition if you don't want to miss out on some of these other great key things that other people are not doing 
that you can do to catch more fish, check out this video right here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. I hope this week finds you out on the water, and I will catch you there.